good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it's my pleasure to be moderating this interesting panel today uh, on young, how young PR leaders can stay ahead of the curve in the industry. So I'll just start with a little bit of insight of what I have seen over the last, uh, actually, around 18 years that I've spent in the industry. Uh, so starting, uh, I remember my early days. Uh, as with most of the people, it was at pub, uh, Perfect Relations. And I remember uh, we used to fax uh, press releases. And, I, and I'm an engineer by education. I used to find it really strange that what am I doing? I'm going to fax press releases for the rest of my life or what? Uh, then we used to make these month reports, we used to track papers in the morning, we had to be there on time about 9, 9.30 in the morning to track all the papers, send all the coverage, you know, uh, and then get the month re uh, daily report out by 10.30 a.m. And then, of course, do the bulky mon monthly reports, which were like these hard copy fat reports that used to go out to the clients. Uh, now, if you can't cut it to today, I mean, if you look at it, everything is digital. You get those reports through multiple platforms, uh, comes directly into the mailbox. You can select and just kind of comes to you. Uh, there is, of course, you don't have to like think of what to write. At that point in time, there was only Google, but now you have uh, chat GPT, so it's easy for you to write anything. I'm assuming, of course, you have to do your own checks. Uh, there was no digital media then. Today, the world is digital. You don't know where somebody writes something about your brand and and here is the crisis waiting for you. So, so the world has totally changed from a PR from a PR standpoint. That time it was more media relations. We used to go for media rounds. Of course, COVID kind of killed it, and then we've started doing those a lot more now. But it's the PR role or the communications role has evolved with the rise of digital, with the rise of a lot of other uh, content pieces to be something which is more, uh, you know, more reputation management uh, professionals who have started to be uh, you know recognized as the important faces or important people in the overall scheme of things the right hand of the ceo working very closely with the board and the management uh, so all in all it's become a more strategic role a more uh, comprehensive role and the person who's leading the communications whether on the agency side whether on the copcom side needs to have a well-rounded understanding not just media relations needs to know a lot of content needs to know a lot of uh, chat gpt or you know understanding ai understanding how you can analyze uh, you know what is happening outside and how your brand uh, sentiment is outside to report it to the management in the way they want to see it and also a lot of content generation in the form of you know videos in the form of uh, various content IPs that you see everywhere podcast everybody's doing so so the world has totally changed and all of this actually falls in the in the purview of a communications person, uh, whether in the corporate side or the agency side. Uh, so, uh, so without much ado, just a little bit of an introduction of where we are today. Uh, I'll start uh, with, an opening, with the opening remarks. So we'll start with Kiran. Kiran, if you can just keep it like for a minute and just let us know what is your view on this. Hi. Is this on? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, okay. So how has PR changed? My God, that's a large topic. So, you know, I think I'll just bucket it under three or four areas. One is I feel the news cycle uh, has changed completely. From 24 hours, we are down to 24-minute news cycles, or even 24-second news cycles. And so we're living in a completely different era, which means that as PR professionals, we need to be on our toes all the time. The second is proliferation of uh, uh, you know, mediums. Today, social influencers, podcasts, that's a reality we need to live with. So there's a lot of information coming from many different areas. Uh, you know, COVID further, I think, served as an inflection point. The very nature of media is changing. You know, from a lot of earned push, now I think one needs to balance earned and paid. Uh, there's, a, uh, there's a lot of stress on media houses also to monetize. Uh, I think another thing that I just want to talk about is on the people side, uh, I think which is perhaps maybe a change that is good. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, you know, discussion around uh, things like mental health, for example, that was never something that was even acknowledged and perhaps when I was in my 20s. I think it's a good change and I think that also goes to say that the kind of talent coming into PR is very different, especially since this is 30 under 30, the, the talent that's coming in is perhaps treating work as one of the things they do, not unlike, not unlike our generation with thought, thought of work as worship or whatever, you know, we were brought up with that kind of uh, a focus. So I think as a profession uh, and as, well, somebody who runs a PR agency, 
I think there's a lot of uh, change that I'm witnessing in terms of also how you induct and coach and treat this talent. And um, I don't necessarily see it as a uh, challenging thing. I think it's a, it's a good thing that, that's happening. So it's a complex world in terms of PR. It's a melting pot. And you really need to be on your feet all the time. So I'm going to now. Okay, thanks Kiran. Uh, Diana, what is your view? Hi, uh, good morning Akanksha, good morning everyone. You know, when I was on flight to Delhi yesterday, I was thinking that what should I say to get a room full of 20 year olds to like me because I have always go gone at various events and said that I don't know what the 20 year old people want and I don't understand them. But on the contrary, uh, you know, I actually feel and believe that they honestly know what they want and they honestly know how to get there. And it is we who have to be as catalysts to help them get there. And it's, it's totally up to us how we sort of help them, you know, but they're transitioning with so much of digital chaos and so much of information outflow and excess information that's there, you know, so it, it is up to us. And I was also circling back to perhaps when I was 20, what would I have done differently or the choices that I would have made which are different that would perhaps, you know, uh, impact my life today. And if I go, if I circle back and see today at 42, I feel that yes, if I had probably invested a lot more time in my in my health or probably, you know, in saving or in understanding finances, I think my life trajectory would have been slightly different. So yes, I feel that information outflow and information, excess information is great. Uh, it's just up to you, how you consume what's important and relevant to you and how you sort of use that to your benefit. Interesting uh, point on Gen Z and uh, the young uh, generation and I kind of echo the sentiment that both of the ladies have put across. Uh, they actually uh, just know what they want and you can't, they can't, they're just not like us. They, you can't, you tell them to do something and it's a good thing. I'm not, uh, yeah, and, they, and, and they're very clear. Maybe we were, to, we, were, we were the generation that was like, you know, we, we have to work, we have to work hard, we will put extra hours, but they're very clear. This is what we can do, this is what is our off time, this is how we have to balance it, which is a good thing. And uh, of course, we'll have to nurture these leaders and maybe build a better world for PR. Moving to Akshita, what is your intro introductory views on this? Um, I think... I think uh, one evident change that I have seen is that today there is more expectation from PR compared to what it was a decade ago. I mean, the client's demand for, uh, you know, PR agencies and their consultants to step up from just being media strategists or experts to really be brand custodians. And I think it goes both ways because, you know, even the, at the consulting side, even we we don't call ourselves agency anymore. You know, we, we like to believe and project ourselves as consultants, as partners, as, you know, people who are on this journey with the brand. So I think that maturity, because when I joined PR, for example, I was the first one in my family to do so. I was the first gen PR uh, professional in my family. But today I have cousins, I have family members who, you know, followed suit after seven, eight years and today they are flourishing in their own side. And I think because of that, what is happening is there are offshoots. Like you mentioned that uh, there's digitization, there's integrated PR, paid, uh, you know, paid initiatives are also given equal importance. I think these are all signs of maturity of what we can bring to the table and therefore we demand a seat at the table and that's why we are working with the leadership directly, which was probably not the case 12 to 15 years ago when most of us uh, probably started, you know, on this journey. So I think, yeah, that's one thing that I feel uh, that, you know, how PR as an industry has grown and one decade is a short period. So to be able to make that stride within a decade, I think that's, that speaks a lot about what we bring to the table. Absolutely. Mukesh, what is your view? Uh, thanks, Akanksha, first of all. Uh, I think I agree with whatever Kiran, Daina and Akshita said, but I think I'm the, I'm the only one on the stage who's been working for 15 years in Bharat, regional India, tier 2 and tier 3, so I'll bring that perspective. Uh, in, in terms of, I'll break it down into two, the talent and the media. I, I believe in terms of media, there has been drastic change since COVID. Uh, digitization has happened, which has made us also evolve into a completely different organization. And everybody who's working in tier two and tier three um, has had to go that way. Uh, in terms of talent, uh, 
I, I somehow believe uh, we are the culprits. We are somehow people who join the PR industry, whether it is at a national firm or a regional firm. We somehow make them get into the superficials too soon. So we tell them to paint the right picture rather than understanding the colors. One such example would be all of us, whether it is a national agency, a corporate communications team or a regional agency, we would have a slide in our uh, pitch presentation in every plan when we are presenting it to the C-suite about uh, only one English publication being in the top 10, Bennett Coleman Group, but what beyond that? Mm -hmm. Most of the people, 90% of the people, if we ask them, there are about 160 languages and dialects that we have in the country, out of which 22 are registered under our constitution. In this room, beyond this room, 90% of the people would not be able to name even 10, 12 of those 22 registered languages. So we talk about regional being important, 85% of the population living there, but ultimately the nuance of it, the understanding of it is missing completely. And again, I'm saying it is up to us as well as, as probably founders of PR agencies or people who are leading communication teams that we are putting so much emphasis on the, on the craft of storytelling uh, in a way that you are just painting the pictures and not understanding what colors to pick. Interesting perspective. Uh, Mukesh, we'll come back to you on more for more on this. Uh, moving ahead, uh, Kiran, uh, what do you think uh, with the rise of technology and data analytics, how do you think communication strategies have changed? What is your uh, you know, view or what is your advice to young professionals, how they can leverage technology and AI to kind of uh, build more innovative campaigns and showcase impact? So first about, uh, you know, the rise of digital, I think one of the key things that uh, professionals, I mean, and this is regardless of age, will need to do is build the ability to connect the dots. I think there is just so much information out there. So being in the know, being curious, being up to date with information and connecting the dots becomes a really important skill. Um, in terms of, um, uh, you know, uh, sort of utilizing Gen AI, personally, I feel it has been a game changer. And I personally also would be lost without this technology. However, this is my personal sort of experience with it. I think with experience, you just get better with the usage of that technology. I find a lot of youngsters uh, using it in a manner which is, uh, I think, not very effective. So learning to use the technology is as key as bringing the best out of the technology. So I feel over there, experience does help. Uh, you know, broadly, here's my uh, thing about uh, technology uh, and the usage of technology is that I think youngsters will learn a lot through osmosis, observation, even by instruction. And it'll be important for them to build, you know, being consistent versus uh, being in a rush. Uh, and I think things will fall into place. I, I personally feel that uh, two things, I think value the input when you're young, the output will come. Uh, and the other thing is, uh, to me, I think we say that a lot at our firm, which is, we hire for attitude and train for skill. So um, I think these two things seem to be important. I mean, my own personal experience is that they work. Uh, so yeah, so I think a lot of, uh, and, and uh, really the, you know, the PR profession, I think is best treated as a marathon uh, and not a sprint because the changes we are seeing today in another five years, they look very, very different. Uh, we don't even know what they look like. So. So yeah, it's, uh, I think it requires a learn it all uh, attitude mentality. Uh, and these are just tools, be it digital, tech, analytics, Gen AI. They are tools to help us do our job better. And I, I, and I think they're helping us. Personally, my own productivity, I feel, has improved by 40% uh, thanks to these tools. Uh, so yeah. Thank you. That's an interesting uh, standpoint. Uh, Moving ahead, a very interesting line that you mentioned, hire for uh, attitude and strain for skill. What do you think, Diana, are the skills uh, that the, or the leadership qualities uh, that you know, the young PR professionals should be trained for? And what are the pitfalls they should avoid? 
Um, you know, we, re we represent this author, author Robin Sharma at Bloomingdale and he has this book called Leaders Without a Title or Lead Without a Title, something like that. And where he says that wherever you are, whoever you may be, you may be a junior executive, you may be an account director, you may be a manager, you need to be a leader in your own right. You know, you need to take onus and take responsibility of your client, of yourself, of your family, your parents, your siblings. And whatever you do, you need to do it to the best of your ability. And that, in my opinion, is skills that you require or that's that's what uh, that is leadership you need not necessarily have a tag of being a boss or being bossy or whatever it should just be it should come from within that wherever i am in whatever space i may be i am doing my best and that's something it should be uh, you know how you should take your career ahead and when it comes to pitfalls i feel that this you know this whole fear and ego and this can I and should I or, you know, is it possible? Like these things are all energy stealers. I think once that's out of the window, once you don't have a fear of approaching somebody or you don't have that ego with dealing with a client or a colleague, I think once you leave fear and ego, I think these are the large two pitfalls, be it in PR or any anywhere in any career at this age. If you have that outside, I think you should be, you should be good. You'll be fine. Sorry, that's a good point. Uh, so yes, if you if you are fearless, for lack of better word, I think you'll do better in communications, as the leaders have pointed out. Moving to Akshita, Akshita, what do you think are the you know so the PR you know the PR uh, world is changing very dynamically. What do you think are the some trends that these guys, the young PR professionals, should keep in mind, hone their skills to be ahead of the game? Uh, thanks, Akanksha. You mentioned ahead of the game, so I'll just take a step back. And before I go to trends, I just want to say that if we want to stay ahead of the curve, we need to think, behave, act, and put in the hard work that is ahead of the curve. I mean, just sitting, you know, you won't be able to be ahead of the curve. And therefore, there are some hacks that, you know, we all can use to stay ahead of the curve. And then, you know, you, you get to know your own trends which are suited to the category you're working on or the clients or the brand that you're working with. For example, I mean, all of us here would either be receiving a media monitor or would be working on one. And I'm not sure how many of us actually go through it diligently every day. I am very, very like particular about reading my media monitor. And over the years, it's really helped me stay ahead of the curve in the sense at least better than what I was yesterday. So ahead of my own curve also matters at some point. And then accordingly, you know, if, if we look at everything that happening around us from the lens of social environment, um, economic environment, political environment. If we just know one trend from each of these, that's like three trends that can help us stay ahead of the curve. Um, I strongly believe that. So, for example, how is the audience changing? One of the big trends we've been talking about is the rise of Gen Z and millennials as a very, very important target audience. I mean, even in real estate, where, you know, a home was more of a generational wealth that probably our parents and the generations left for us. But today, that's not the case. People are actively investing. Gen Z have increased investments in real estate. So, you know, that is one trend that I would say that, and given the fact that they're also the next gen leaders, they, they would know how to best market or best position their brand to these, um, you know, to these cohorts. And similarly, I think, while influencers, social media, all of that is there, but the role of UGC is another one that I would like to probably bring to the table, that that's really where the next um, you know, chain of communication lies. And as Mukesh, you rightly mentioned, regional PR, vernacular media, I think I've been really trying to do my best to bring that on the table, and I think that really requires a mind sh mindset shift. But I think it's really the responsibility of the next-gen leaders to really pull up the industry from the usuals to find the right colors to paint that picture. You know. Thanks, Akshita. Uh, Mukesh, uh, coming back to your regional, uh, you know, of course, you've worked a lot across Bharat. And if you look at the regional communication strategy of companies, it's mostly very broken or it's very ad hoc in the sense that, okay, let's get stories in the print media in the Danic jargons of the world and then Okay, forget it. You know, so I just want to understand from you if PR, young PR professionals want to invest more and understand the cultural differences and leverage them from a communication strategy standpoint, how can they go about it? 
Sure, Akansha, but something has been playing on my mind. We've been talking about the young generation. So I'll just take 30 seconds and then we'll move to your question. I think we need to cut them some slack. When uh, we were growing up, there was there were uh, the, the distractions that we had were minimal. Uh, the exposure that we had was also not this much. Uh, the expectations from people to succeed, be a millionaire, billionaire, whatever, before you touch 30, were not there. So, I mean, there must be something that we as leaders are also doing wrong. Uh, if we are not able to shape up their opinions in the way that we want. So, I mean, not many people in their 20s are there in the room, but I'm hoping they will be watching. Uh, uh, so, they are doing fine. I think it's just a churn, it's just a phase. Um, once the, the things get settled, people get used to the, the kind of uh, distractions that we are going through on a day-to-day -day basis. I think it will fall into place and we will have uh, leaders in the next decade or so, uh, which we will be able to vouch for. Uh, now getting to uh, what you asked, uh, the cultural... Uh, uh, you asked about the, how do we make it work uh, and how do we ensure that we understand the cultural nuances. Okay, so I, I feel uh, when in regional India or Bharat, it was always about amplification and brands were never understanding the true potential of what uh, a, a separate communication strategy can do when you are planning for your regional communication, which has changed drastically over the past decade. Um, it has, in a way, moved from understanding the media landscape only, uh, understanding, like you said, or like Akshita said, what can be done, uh, how can we best utilize the media opportunities that we have, to understanding the consumers we have in regional India now. I think it has moved from deep understanding of media landscape to a thorough understanding of the consumer landscape. Uh, taking it a notch higher, it is also about talking in the same language. And when I'm talking about the language, I'm not necessarily talking about the bhasha of it. I am talking about the understanding of their cultural nuances, their festivals, uh, what are the things that they are brought up with, what are the insecurities that they have. Uh, for example, if we are talking about Karnataka, uh, language plays a huge part. Uh, same goes for Maharashtra, same goes for uh, Punjab. And if you are doing any campaign whatsoever and you do not understand how farmers, what farmers are going through in the states of Punjab and Andhra Pradesh and you are doing a campaign, there it could backfire. So the basic would be to understand the market and the consumer before you are even starting to plan for your brands. Uh, third and the most important part I think would be understanding a little bit of geographical landscape as well as a political landscape. I, I still see most of the people in the PR industry, again, as I said, it is, it is becoming superficial. I don't know why. We are only focusing on what our clients want rather than telling them what exactly is the need of the R and what is the, 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 the voices that you're hearing from on ground. Uh, so once we start doing that, I think most of the people in the PR industry would not know, do we have 28 states, 29 states? Jammu and Kashmir now converted into UT, is it seven UTs now or eight UTs now? Forget about the capitals, forget about the governments we have in place, forget about the media inclinations or the political affiliations that we have in media houses. So until or unless we get the basics in place and understand those cultural nuances, I think we'll be going around in the same vicious cycle that we've been going around in the past decade. Yeah, I think uh, very pertinent points and it's important for us to not just work superficially but kind of get in-depth into what is, what are the nuances and accordingly plan our strategy. Uh, just moving ahead in the interest of time, Kiran, uh, uh, so crisis today can, can hit us any day, any moment, any time, one post on X can kind of start a crisis. What is, what do you think, uh, what would be your, uh, you know, guidance for I'm sorry, I'll have to say young PR professionals, that's the topic. What would be your guidance for emerging PR professionals to manage this, uh, the crisis in today's times better? Okay, so, um, so you're right about that, Akanksha. I mean, crisis is erupting, you know, typically on Twitter or even LinkedIn today. So let me divide this into two parts. One is the skill and one is maybe traits, personality traits that one needs. So, you know, when it comes to skill, I feel managing crisis because it's, it can really translate into loss of reputation, business for a brand. It's a very, very serious thing. 
So I think it comes over time as you get better with managing a crisis. There's, of course, a broad framework that all PR professionals are aware of. But if, having said that, every crisis is also very, uh, you know, can be very unique as well. And the response, therefore, has to be unique. I think it's a skill that comes over time once you spend time in the business. And then it, I think it starts to come to you very intuitively. Uh, and you know what to do. Uh, now, the thing is that different kinds of crises, you know, the, there was a Cadbury crisis and the Maggie crisis was very different. But off late, a crisis that comes to my mind is the exchange between uh, the Ola founder and uh, Kunal Kamra. Now, that is also a crisis of a, of a kind, you know, which needs, which needs to be managed. Uh, so, I think each one of them requires a different kind of response. And I am not very certain, while young PR professionals uh, are key to the equation in terms of being, like having their ear to the ground, I think they could need hand-holding to actually uh, respond to it uh, effectively. Now, on the other side, the kind of skill you need, I think, and that's, uh, I think that uh, it's a skill that I think anyone would require in any kind of crisis, be it personal or professional, which is you need to command like a calm exterior because you're managing multiple stakeholders. The pressure is quite intense because we've noticed when a crisis hits, uh, you know, uh, clients could be panicked. Uh, they put a lot of undue pressure uh, on you. You're dealing with uh, a large number of stakeholders trying to calm nerves. So I think, uh, uh, you know, learning to be calm in a crisis is very cliched, but, uh, you know, and that comes with time and experience and having worked in a few. Uh, I think it's, uh, uh, I think it's like a, uh, you know, sort of uh, uh, learning to manage crisis is by going through the fire uh, and getting comfortable doing it. Uh, but the possibility of crisis is only increasing because of the number of mediums today that we are dealing with. So uh, monitoring, therefore, becomes hugely critical. And, uh, you know, being on top of things and uh, knowing what could potentially sort of, uh, you know, become a crisis uh, is a, like an important muscle to hone as well. You know, I, 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 I think it's best learned on the job. I'm not so sure, and it'll just come to you. I mean, you know, but I'm sure a personal crisis also requires one to be uh, calm, <coughs> listen, understand, and then, you know, uh, so I think it's pretty similar. So, yeah, a lot is required. <laughs> I think a uh, valid point. Uh, I won't take more time, but yeah, I can vouch for it that crisis, you need to have a cool head. And then uh, having managed one of the biggest crises in start of world, I can say that. And you have, and then it becomes part of your life, so you don't react. The world can jump around you, but you'll just keep a cool head. So I think that's my advice to young professionals. Uh, Diana, there's a lot of stuff said on mentorship. And, you know, we also, as professionals, whatever level in our career we are, there is a lot of focus we give on mentorship, and the right mentors can really own us to be at the next level. Uh, what do you think, uh, how can young professionals, you know, kind of learn or uh, do better with mentorship, and how do they find mentors? You know, mentorship is so, so, so important. And today at 42, I realized that even more. Like I was mentioning even earlier, if somebody told me to do some things differently, I would have been in a different space. But having said that, uh, the digital age today has made mentorship so accessible. Like even reading books of, say, Sir Ratan Tata or Mahatma Gandhi, you need not have mentors who are in person in the same industry, but reading great books and looking at podcasts and watching, pe watching great people and what they've done, is a great learning experience. Uh, mentorship also is something that you can learn at home from your parents, from your grandparents. I don't know why we discount that. You know, there's so much of learning within your families that I feel young professionals just, you know, don't bother about. I think that again is something which which we should they should really pay heed because they're not going to be around for too long. Your grandparents are not going to be around for too long, right? So it's just about how you absorb while they are there and make the most of it. So mentorship uh, is something that is is constant process. Even today, I need mentors. It's not something that you need in your twenties. It's something that you constantly have and 
just they change as you grow up uh, and secondly uh, you know even linkedin to have like a mentor within the industry if you see linkedin has a paid subscription or whatever at about two and a half three grand which is maybe the cost of your meal at, at on, on, on a weekend maybe invest that money on linkedin and try and reach out to people who are industry leaders not just within india but across the world and trust me people do respond when you reach out to them for anything that you require i have had personal experiences there too so if you really invest in your career go up on linkedin reach out to people put yourself out there be fearless i think mentorship is something that you require at at various stages and it can do generally do wonders to your life and career okay so mentorship is required uh, quickly moving to akshita just the last two couple of questions uh, akshita what do you think how social media and own media today can help shape narrative and how do pr professionals leverage it better I think that's one existential crisis question that I've also been asking myself since I started working. I'm sure all of you, raise of hands, all of us here manage brand, some brand, right? We'll be managing a client's brand or our employer's brand or an individual brand, but we often, you know, therefore get tired by the time it comes to managing our own brand. And that's really staying ahead of the curve, that one extra bit that differentiates who is ahead of the curve and who is with the curve. I personally feel both is okay. It should be a conscious decision that I don't want to build a brand. But in today's reality, we have to build our own brands. And some of it starts with as easy as, you know, the work that we do daily. And especially if we are on the consulting side and we are managing three to four clients, that's three to four narratives of our own work, of our own personality, which can, you know, be put out there in various formats. So I think just leveraging the work that we are doing every day on a daily basis, people we are meeting and observing, that itself helps us to, you know, talk about and build our own brand. And over the years, I feel it, it has incremental change in the way people see you. I have experienced it. I wasted a lot of time not talking about my work anywhere. And then I met a mentor on LinkedIn because I invested some time in it. And they guided me and I started just, you know, whatever I'm doing, I'm here, I'll write a post about this. At work, I meet someone, I write about that. And it has opened up opportunities. It has, you know, made my learning curve steeper. So I think just finding your voice and to be able, because writing is a part of our repertoire. Um, you know, social media optimization is something we all know. Creatives, we'll, we'll find a way to do it. It's just a matter of putting those 10 minutes of thoughts together and posting it out there. So I think there is no excuse for any of us to not be active on our own channels, to be able to leverage our own expertise in building our own brands. And if we consciously choose not to do it, that's okay. But if you're talking about staying ahead of the curve, it's I think time we start doing it. So it's time that we start doing it. Uh, Mukesh, just one last thing uh, before we do the closing. Uh, you've covered a lot about regional media and how we should look at it at a more detailed, comprehensive level. Uh, there are a lot of these new age platforms that have come up, you know, where there is a lot of content which is being, uh, you know, put out. And uh, even brands are leveraging it, uh, them to you know, reach out to customers at that level, the grassroots level or at the uh, regional level. What is your uh, take on that? How can PR professionals use that? Sure, Akansha. But first of all, I think I'm thankful my parents are not in the room and I hope they never see this. Otherwise, they would have said, Dinah considers her parents role models. Why don't you? <laughs> okay, sorry. Getting back to what you asked. I, I think, uh, Akansha, uh, even in regional media, all the media houses have gone digital. They are focusing as much, if not more, on their digital platform. I think we probably need to understand it is all about trust and it is trust is platform agnostic. Uh, the Somebody sitting in Ahmedabad, if he trusts a media house, say Gujarat Samachar, irrespective if Gujarat Samachar has a YouTube channel or uh, uh, an online portal or an e-paper or a physical, physical copy, it is about the source from which the news is coming to us. So as long as we understand that we are we are in the good there are channels like lalan top is a is a perfect example having about 30 million subscribers a hindi channel uh, and it is meeting uh, in, in in comparison to a uh, kari minati youtube uh, channel 
which has 25 million followers so again i'll go back to the same thing i have not lost hope in the in the new generation if there are people who are following people like kerry minati and going berserk about it there are people equally uh, uh, equal number of people who are following content platforms like lal and top as well so uh, digitization is something that we would not be able to avoid but understanding trust and relatability are the two factors which media houses are also playing on so i'll, I'll leave it at that <laughs> Okay, so uh, I think the time is up. Uh, if there are any questions, we can take them or we'll just do a little closing and that's it. Okay. Okay, so just a humble request to our panelists. I know we're running short on time, but your session has been curated so diligently that we have questions here. So just a quickie. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my name is Puneet Aujha. I come from Prefere Limited, UK. See, my, uh, I was hearing, you know, all uh, you know, the wonderful uh, uh, the talk that you had. My only question is, digital media, when you talk of, there is so much of knowledge on the internet that we get confused, right? So if you are doing any advertising on the digital media, you have to be very, very precise. Because today, you know, we get about 20 mails for one product. So how to choose? That's my question. I mean, Can what I I'm saying is that, you know, at times digital media becomes a curse also because of too much of information. Sir, I think you're absolutely right. But what I feel is I just mentioned it is all about trust. So for as advertisers or communicators, we also need to understand our audience and, and figure out if somebody sitting in in, in a small town in Andhra Pradesh, what is the channel he would be trusting? So like you said, uh, you are being bombarded with news, you are being bombarded with advertisements, but ultimately if I trust a particular channel, I am more inclined to take my purchase consideration basis that channel. So it comes from a nuanced understanding of the consumer you are approaching or you are reaching out to and what is the kind of media channel or any communication channel that that person is more likely to trust. Uh, I, I believe it's, it's all about trust and if relatability again, if he's able to relate uh, to that news uh, uh, medium, then he's more likely to be open towards the communication that you are throwing his or her way. Uh, I'm Jayant Bose. I've been in advertising, marketing and PR. Now, I've got two sir. basic issues. Number one, PR I thought was an issue based and advertising was brand oriented. Because there seems to be a conflict because you're saying today PR is talking in terms of branding. Advertising is talking about branding. How do you resolve this issue? Uh, thank you for that question. I mean, the way I approach it is that Today, everything is towards reputation. There is no denying it. Whatever we do, it's about brand building and reputation management. Very basic or a very simple difference would be the channel. I think PR primarily should and continues to focus on earned media. So it could be an event, it could be a newspaper, it could be you know somebody talking about us, but it's something that we have earned because of our work, because of the reputation we have built, because of the relationships we have built. And advertising is more on paid media, you know, where you buy an inventory because you know that channel is trustworthy, you know your audience will, you know, uh, take it up. So I think if the funnel is awareness to adoption, we are working the first 70% of the journey where we are creating awareness, where we are creating that trust. And the last mile probably PR and advertising work together from a more adoption and, you know, generating direct business perspective. I mean, that's how I look at it. But yeah. Just to add to what Akshita is saying, sir, uh, today, apart from PR and advertising, there's also social media which can't be ignored. For someone like a Ravant of uh, Food Farmer, for example, you know, ev today everyone's a journalist, everyone has a voice and there's a platform for everyone. Someone like him was able to get Bon Vita to reduce sugar or to Nestle to make healthy Maggie or whatever, you know. So today the power of an individual person can't be ignored and that person need not necessarily be a journalist or an advertiser or a large publication. It is anybody, people like you and me who have a voice who can go out there and, you know, put content out there that is relevant, that can literally shake, you know, industries worth billions of dollars. So today everyone's a journalist and I think that can't be ignored. I'm sorry, uh, can uh, we take the questions the offline? We've uh, already extended the time. Yeah, my name is Giri Sethi. Uh, 
this pr public relationship it's a very important subject you take can up uh, dina you rightly said the new generation are the fear and the ego yes. it's very important and mukesh you rightly mentioned the communication it's a very very weak point in this new generation the biggest example if you can quote anyone the amul ice cream the insect found in the amul ice cream the see the immediate action on that public relations how it um, they maintain public relation and the media the company itself they call the lady and ask give us that pack and you come to us we will show you the unit iso certified how we are making and that that lady has to withdraw the the uh, the problem from the media so this is uh, the communication is very very important which is missing in the new generation very very important and the most important is the confidence i can do it i can resolve it that is missing time management the new generation i am sorry to say 530 wash hand thank you good boy थोड़ा uh you know they uh, yeah so <laughs> i feel the onus lies on us as well to be a lot more understanding and uh, open to how they may want to work but you're right i feel i also feel that there are certain foundational things that are important listening power is missing sir yeah, i maybe think maybe we you, can listen you come to me why should i go to you So oh, sir I think I've already advocated for them a lot I will not debate any further I will just take your business card and call you to our office for a session if you can make a difference that will be huge Okay thank you guys thank you so much sorry we've exceeded on time but thank you It was well, a pleasure to be here and just one small little comment while there has been a lot of criticism on the young PR professionals I worked with a few young PR professionals of late I think from a social media digital media standpoint they are spot on they do our what I would do in one hour they'll do in 10 minutes so there's a lot we can also learn from them and I think uh, we'll have to come little uh, we'll have to move a few steps and they have to move a few steps thank you